Hello, my name is Manuel Flores. I plan on becoming an elementary school teacher, and through my following slides, you will learn about my vision statement regarding my cultural look into education. Types of learning and hidden curriculum. We start off by acknowledging the different learning styles my students will bring and how we can encompass that style in the teaching. In my classroom, inclusion will be a priority for student success and a pathway for positive behavior throughout their lifespan. We can see that the term learning style speaks to the understanding that every student learns differently and that is okay. Those style of learning can range from visual learners, auditory learners, and kinesthetic learners. As the new students enter the classroom, each one of them will have a different story and a different learning technique. Regardless of their learning style, we as a class will overcome those differences and continue to break the ceiling glass within education. I will continue to strive in creating a positive learning environment where all students feel secure and open to thinking outside of the box. According to the Hidden Curriculum website, the Hidden Curriculum concept is based on the recognition that students absorb lessons in schools that may or may not be part of the formal course study. For example, how they should interact with peers, teachers, and other adults, how they should perceive different races, groups, or classes of people or what ideas and behaviors are considered acceptable or unacceptable. Learning environment and the concepts of space, place, and material culture. Vital to a child's development, the learning environment, which is the classroom, is meant for students to feel safe, encouraged, and welcomed. This is imperative to their success. The environment is a language with its own vocabulary and grammar, but school grounds are part of both the worlds of school with its cultural and social reference points and of the general outside. Tittman, 1994, page 29. In terms of space and place, when my students are working in groups, they are each utilizing this space to build upon their skills that will follow them throughout their career goals. The way their desks are arranged will open a form of, of discussion within their peers and it will also help in diversifying their knowledge amongst other cultures. According to the reading on material culture and schooling, possible new exploration in the history of Canadian education, school desks are not simply pieces of furniture. They are, in a world, the locus of learning in the classroom. They are also the locus of order and control. With the appropriate furniture in the classroom, the students will be able to form positive bonds and relationships. They could find somewhere to sit with friends, to play a game or talk, or an intimate sheltered place to sit and do nothing, signifying that the grounds provided a place for them and people like them by recognizing and meeting some of their needs and general making the place more comfortable. Tittman, 1994, page 63. The Achievement Gap and Cultural Bias According to our lecture, the achievement gap refers to the disparity of achievement between various student groups. This gap exists especially between groups that differ in socioeconomic status, race, ethnicity, and gender. However, we have constructed an educational system dependent on local taxes that provides great schools for the rich kids in the suburbs who need the least help and broken, dangerous schools for inner city children who desperately need a helping hand. Quoted by the New York Times. Moreover, we have to stay connected to the cause and create a pathway that will incorporate a safe and inclusive learning environment for all students to enjoy. My recommendations in closing the achievement gap is to enhance cultural confidence across the school region, create a comprehensive support system for students, maintain a proper outreach to students' families, and create a supportive school system. In terms of cultural bias, we have to ensure the proper training is given to educators when starting their teaching career. Understanding that certain phrases, questions, or statements can be seen as a cultural bias. This is hard to do at times because most of the material has already been pre-printed and cannot be edited. Test bias, slide 10. Examining unconscious bias is imperative to improving educational outcomes, particularly for low-income students, minorities, and women in STEM. But the only way to do that is to first understand what biases exist for most teachers. Austin, 2018. Culture as a Disability and Interpreting Culture Conflict in Learning Environments. McDermott and Vereen were able to point out the possibility that every culture, 
teaches people what to aspire to and hope for, and Max marks off those who are to be noticed, handled, mistreated, and remediated as falling short. We continue to see this with standardized testing, and when we categorize our students into their given categories, depending on how they performed. Therefore, culture as a disability continues to affect our students because of their culture and making them think they are less than anything. However, because of the lack of resources, our students ranking in the low minority groups are being sucked into this category of remedial learners. In my classroom, I will shift my focus on being inclusive when implementing culture-related ideas and lessons by understanding my students and their respective families, ensuring that all students get access to a quality education. In terms of cultural conflict, I plan on establishing a learning community where all cultures and disabilities are included, celebrated, and accepted for who they are. I will not sit back and create a false narrative. Instead, I will connect with my students and encourage them to keep an open mind. Pop Culture and Core Rituals Connecting and building rapport is crucial in gaining the trust of your students and of their parents. Today, we learn a lot from the media and we can make connections in any field. We see how everything in society is connected and in, connected and in education. We find ways to connect the outside world into our daily classroom. For instance, our students revolve around social media and they tend to be connected to a certain character on a TV show or a cartoon figure. So why not incorporate that pop culture and let our students see that learning can be fun? The Fishman article noted how certain cartoons and comic strips can be used in understanding current educational problems and in developing multiple, constantly involving pedagogies of celebration and differences. Not only are we encouraging our students to think critically, we are also asking them to analyze and create conversation based on their findings. By using pop culture, we are opening a better way to interact and engage with our students, showing them that we appreciate them, we are trying to connect with them, and show them that learning can be fun. For instance, in an article, Eight Tips for Integrating Pop Culture in the Classroom, discusses how students who aren't interested in discussing historical details are likely to open up quickly when you mention a popular YouTube video or sports team, demonstrating the connection between pop culture and education. We also focus on core rituals and setting an environment that is structured and predictable. Children need a daily routine they can learn and become more of an independent learner. The beginning of the year offers an opportunity to think about your routines and rituals and how they could support each child's emotional and social well-being. Greenberg. As we read in the PowerPoint Culture in Schools Ritual Slide 4, the little things we do in our daily learning environment can become a part of the daily grind of our lives. Rituals are a great way in keeping our students prepared and ready to succeed in life. Culturally Responsive Teaching Being a culturally responsive teacher is having the ability to learn from and relate respectively with our students of the same culture as well as those from other cultures, staying inclusive with all students and encouraging a diverse network in the classroom. By doing so, in my classroom, I will focus on my behavior and those around me. I will get to know my students on a personal level, create a judgment-free zone, adapt their multicultural teaching curriculum, and create an all-inclusive community. This will ensure that my students are comfortable enough to show us their unique set of skills. However, Per our PowerPoint Know Your Learners slide 4, we also want to be careful not to make assumptions and stereotypes when getting to know our students. It is easy for someone to assume the language, beliefs, customs, etc. of their students simply based on where they are from. Instead, let us provide our students with specific assignments that will portray their culture and help us understand where they are from, giving our students a chance to be heard and listened to. Thank you.